Hello, my name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, I will be talking about the 18th varietal in my series on different grape varieties. This one will be about Malbec. Malbec is a red grape variety, or a black grape, as many would call it, blue-black, uh, that makes a red wine. Today we'll be speaking about Malbec and its interesting history across the world. The origins of Malbec go back to the southwestern part of France, in the region around Cahors. It's known from DNA testing now that its parents are Prunelard, the father, and Magdalene Noir de Charente, the mother which is also the mother of Merlot. And therefore, Malbec is a half-sibling of Merlot. We believe it's coming from the Cahors regions because this is where the grape is grown, and its father, the Prunelard, is an ancient but rare variety from this region of France. It has synonyms that can be confusing for this grape. Other synonyms are Oxeroy, Cahors, Kut, which is the official BIBC prime name for Malbec. But Malbec is used commonly because its prevalence of use around the world, particularly with the recent fame or interest in popularity from Argentina. It also has different spellings, such as Malbec with a K, and then Pressac is another name from a different region within France. The grape was taken to Argentina by Michel Pouget in the 1850s. These clones in Argentina are now genetically distinct as proven by DNA testing. And this grape was also introduced to California in the 1850s. Its most popular locations are in Argentina, France, and the United States. Malbec likes intermediate to warm climates similar to Merlot. And of course, you can see in this chart here that it fits right next to Merlot in the categories for average growing season temperatures. It performs better at higher elevations as found in Argentina, particularly the higher the elevation, the better the quality of the grapes and wine that are produced from those grapes. In particular, we're talking about 2,600 to about 5,000 foot elevations in the eastern side of the Andes. Malbec is a vigorous vine and produces a medium-sized leaf that has three shallow lobes, as you can see in the upper right-hand corner here, with very reduced lateral sinuses and short sharp toothed margins. It has a U-shaped petiolar sinus. Its clusters are medium, wide, and conical, and the berries are loose. It has short to medium peduncles. Malbec has blue-black berries, which are medium-sized, round, with thin skins, and the shoot tips are felty with a reddish tinge to the young leaves. It grows well on a wide range of soils. It's usually spur prune, cordon trained, and usually grown in a vertical shoot positioning system. It has strong lateral shoot growth, which makes for a dense canopy, and therefore shoot thinning is needed to keep the canopies open to reduce mildew and improve fruit quality. It has a mid-bud break, you know, a few days later than Chardonnay, and a mid-season harvest in the fall. It's sensitive to couleur, which is a French word for poor fruit set, which is affected by high vigor vines or cool weather at flowering. There is substantial clonal variation within Malbec, and this is especially true in Argentina where clonal selection has been going on for some time. It has extremely variable 
production depending on the fruit set. If it has poor fruit set, of course, then it's going to have much lower yields, but also on the clones. So usually the yields are considered low. We'll talk more about the clonal variation in a little bit. It's sensitive to frost, at least according to the data that happened in 1956 in Bordeaux, where much of the crop was wiped out in this frost. However, looking at data for cold hardiness in Washington state, it's comparable to the data that's been found for Merlot. And here you can see on the right, a picture of an Argentinian vineyard of Malbec. Okay, let's talk about clones for a moment. There are approximately 10 plus registered selections in California that you can find at the Foundation Plant Services. Two of those clones, Malbec 20 and 21, were listed in the history by Nancy Sweet as clones that came from Argentina. So they may be distinctly different from the California Malbecs that originally came from France by a different route. The descriptions of these clones are quite interesting, and there are very large differences between the clones. And you can find those descriptions at the Foundation Plant Services website listed here. Some are very sensitive to Kulur, others are not. And so it's recommended that you look at these carefully and pick out a clone that is resistant to Kulur. Wines made from Malbec grapes can be deeply colored and intensely flavored, especially if they're grown in dry climates at higher altitude, as in Argentina. The higher altitudes give you more UV light, which is, as you know, can cause sunburn on humans, but also in grapes. And the grapes naturally produce more phenolic compounds to protect itself against that higher UV light. And this helps to increase the phenolic complexity of wines grown in higher elevation. If Malbec grapes are not fully ripe when harvested, then they tend to have a herbaceous character to them. So they're usually ripened to full ripeness at higher sugar contents, which produce higher alcohol wines in Argentina. They produce wines with moderate acids and soft, silky tannins. The fruit flavor and aroma descriptions are black currant, blackberry, raspberry, plum, coffee, chocolate, spice, and violets. Malbec is one of the five red varieties of Bordeaux and so therefore allowed to be blended into Bordeaux style wines. And it also has to be made up of 70% of the wines made in Cahors in order to be labeled as a wine from that region. There are distinct differences that exist between the grapes that were grown in Argentina and the grapes that have been grown in California. And I'm going to outline just a few of those differences. There is a lot of research going on on these distinctions. I'm only going to cite a few of the differences here, but there are many studies out there, particularly from Argentina, that have been looking at their unique characteristics from Argentina. So California, we know, as we just spoke about, have about 10 plus registered clones. In Argentina, people have reported that they're studying hundreds of clones, up to 800 clones that have been narrowed down. Now, if these are really clones or not, it's, it's not clearly established, at least by genetics, but they have noticed distinct differences in the morphology of the vine or the characteristics of the grapes. At any rate, they have isolated and developed these clones and patented some of these clones. The Catena family, who produce very fine wines in Argentina, have been very active in establishing these clones as well as the characteristics of these wines that are made there. We know that the vines in California have a high vigor with medium-sized loose clusters, and according to the studies in Argentina, the vines in Argentina, at least some of them, have lower vigor, smaller berries with tighter clusters. So there's some distinct morphological differences between the clones. There was also a very interesting study done that I'm going to report here from King et al. that was published in Food Chemistry in 2014, where they 
looked at 26 different wines made in Argentina and 15 wines made from California. The wines were fermented in our Argentina at one place and the wines in California were fermented at UC Davis under controlled conditions and harvested all in the same year. Comparing wines, as you know, wines are very different from each other, is a tricky business. And they have done a very careful analysis as best they can to compare these wines in both the actual chemical constituents of the wines, as well as in the sensory characteristics of the wine. And they've associated that with the climatic conditions, the locations, and they find very distinct differences. Some of the highlights that they summarized here are that California Malbec wines were rated high in artificial fruit, citrus, and bitter characteristics, whereas the Mendoza Malbec wines were rated high in ripe fruit, sweet, and hot. If you want to know more about what those characteristics are, I suggest you read the paper that I've cited down below. I want you to take a look at the chart here on the right because it's very informative. This is a chart or a graph produced from generalized Procrustes analysis, which is a multivariate statistical analysis, which is used to make comparisons to different things. In this case, what you see on the figure is a two-dimensional chart. And as you move up the x-axis or the y-axis, you separate out these characteristics. And in this two-dimensional plane, you can see the boxes for different regions, such as Sonoma, Napa, Monterey, Lodi, and Yolo. Those are all parts of California, which all tend to be to the left side of the figure. On the right side of the figure, are the Argentinian region. So right there, it's showing there's a distinction between California and Argentina. But you also see that there are distances between the different cities or locations. So even within California, there are big differences. And within Argentina, there are big differences. In small letters here with circles next to them are the actual chemical constituents of the wine volatiles that were analyzed. And each of these have aroma characteristics that contribute to certain sensory analyses, which are also listed in here. So you can see astringent, chocolate, viscous, sweet, cooked vegetable. And the bottom right quadrant is where Mendoza's wines are largely listed. And associated with that is a line or an arrow that says altitude which goes to show that the altitude was also associated with these characteristics. And there are many, many more volatile aromas in this area, particularly those associated with red fruit characteristics or aromas. In this figure, you can also interpret that the number of volatiles in the lower right-hand quadrant of the Mendoza wines are much more complex than much of the California wine. So there's room for improvement in California wines. This could come from a different set of clones that are coming perhaps from Argentina, but also in terms of how they're grown and where they're grown and at what elevation they're grown at. So in summary, we didn't test Malbec in our Northern Nevada varietal trial, but the cold tolerance is similar to Merlot in Washington state. Malbec has potential for Northern Nevada, in my opinion given its similar viticultural characteristics to Merlot and its higher quality of grapes produced in the higher elevations of Argentina. Remember that up to about 5,000 feet was where some of the best Argentinian Malbec wines were being made. And our elevation in Reno, Nevada is about 4,500 feet. So we have excellent potential. Similarly, we have a very dry climate and high light intensity as associated with the higher altitude. Therefore, we may be able to produce wines of equal quality to those in Argentina, given our climatic conditions. The one caveat is cold and whether we can survive those rare cold events that hit us in northern Nevada. Malbec's introduction in California in the 1850s gives it a long history, 
but clonal selection and elevation may be limiting its potential in California. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, then please like it on my YouTube channel. It will highlight this video and allow others to see it more easily. Have a great day.